All right, third eye chakra week. So, third eye chakra. Um, I had some really interesting information come through when I was working on the third eye. And I'm not sure, you know, um, I didn't study a lot of the well-known um, teachers in chakra theory. Um, I didn't have a wealth of knowledge in chakra theory. People would laugh at me if I said that. I I was like superficial book smart when I when I started this journey you know I knew the classic like what a hypo or hyper uh, chakra looked like and acted like but um, truthfully I didn't study anybody's work on chakra theory I um, I just knew the chakras and what they were supposed to do and you know what their main attributes were so when I I came to the third eye chakra I was given this information that has stuck with me and um, and not until like a week ago did it become really clear in my life how it was working out but um, the guides had told me that the third eye chakra and the root chakra are like bookends to your chakra pillar and that the crown chakra is almost and I wouldn't say it's not in the chakra column because of course it's in the chakra column, but it's almost its own entity where if you look at somebody's physical body, um, the crown chakra is up here at the, at the head and then, or excuse me, the third eye is here and then the crown chakra is a foot above the head. So it's not necessarily attached into the physical body. And so um, when I came to third eye week, I was told that the third eye chakra and the root chakra are bookends on this um, in the energetic channel and without a strong third eye um, you won't have the connection at the root and without a strong connection at the root you won't have the third eye and um, and it made sense to me because those are I those are very powerful um, energetic centers um, they're very to me the easy is or the easy the energy is really tangible in those areas um, you know, we know when we're seeing and perceiving from a higher perspective than most, and we know when we can um, kind of see everything in a very clear perspective from the third eye chakra, and then we know when we're grounded in the world, and we know when things are manifesting and things are connecting and people are coming into our lives. And so it's just very tangible, easy energy to understand in the third eye and the root chakra. And so something I learned was that um, these chakras kind of have partners. So third eye and root. You can't have a functioning third eye without a functioning root and vice versa. You can't have a functioning root without a functioning third eye. Um, and so then to move down the throat chakra and the sacral chakra, same thing. Those two really partner together and then the heart chakra and the solar plexus chakra. So something that I came across in this past week is the third eye energy. So I have been channeling a lot more than I have ever in my life, as well as doing um, the some of the finishing workshop classes. And so that's, again, channeling and taking a lot of the energy out of me. And, um, and I have never been one to have a completely connected root chakra. And so even though I'm a lot better than I used to be, I still have some issues in the root chakra. So um, doing all this really high energy work, um, I was bringing this energy into my body and using my clairvoyant centers, my third eye center, and um, I was not grounding the energy. And therefore, after two weeks of this work, my body completely fizzled out. It started one morning, um, one Friday morning, and I woke up and I had um, the beginnings of a headache. And within four hours, I was nauseous and ready to just basically black out. That um, pain in my head was so bad and so severe. And, um, and I literally went and laid down and blacked out for like a half an hour and um, started having the realizations that it was me not channeling the energy properly and that I was holding the energy in my body and not 
connecting and um, not grounding it, just like a real energetic current, right, or an electrical cord, um, has to be grounded to flow properly. And so I was not grounding my energy and therefore the energy was contained in my body and high frequency energy is it's painful. I mean, you know, we're not used to it as humans. We can't hold that charge in our body um, without fizzling out. So um, what happened was I went through a process of, um, of basically then uh, grounding myself in the physical world um, as, as best I could. So I don't drink coffee or caffeine or um, eat really bad. And so what happened a few days before this um, happened was um, I started drinking um, like hot chocolates and more sugary drinks. Um, I think I started drinking Snapple. <laughs> I started eating candy. Um, I probably ordered pizza, which is a typical thing for me when I um, am not grounding my energy. So in the physical world, my body started to try and ground my energy because I was not grounding the high frequency energy that was flowing through me. And so my body, in the physical world started trying as hard as it could to ground me. And since I wasn't listening and I still wasn't taking note of what was happening, um, on that Friday, I woke up and um, I couldn't get, I was gonna do Fridays are my day off, so I was gonna do all my recordings, I was gonna do Akasha greetings, I was gonna do all this stuff, and the internet wouldn't work in my house. And so as soon as the internet didn't work, I had the realization that the guides were intervening and this is when things started clicking and I went, okay, so I'm not supposed to be working on this today, which is so hard not to do when you have a whole day off. And, um, and slowly they started forcing me to ground my energy. So pain in the physical body pulls us where it pulls every ounce of our being inside of our body and says, hey, you got to notice this. You have to take charge of what's going on. You have to understand what you're doing to your body right now. And basically they made me take the day off and I actually took the next 72 hours off and didn't do anything because I was still in such a bad state from um, not, not grounding that energy completely. So when you work in these higher level energy centers, the energy comes in so strong sometimes when you're connected to it, if you're not running it. And what that means to me is um, you have to say your psychic reading for somebody, right? You're pulling in whatever you do when you're reading somebody's energy um, or you're going on these visual meditations. If you, once you close, if you stay in that mental field, if you keep thinking about it, if you allow the thoughts to continue to permeate through you, like, oh, I should have told the person this, or oh, I should have asked my guide that. Um, if you continue to stay engaged in that energy in your field, you have not grounded the energy and you have not regrounded yourself into the present physical world. And so that's why teachers will say, as soon as you're done with a meditation, get up, take a drink, go clean your house, go do your laundry, go do something that is so severely human that it forces you to get back into the physical world. And so if you don't reestablish your grounding in this physical world, then you're gonna continue to hold the energy inside of you and that's where you'll short circuit and that's where you'll start to burn yourself out um, and be in headaches, insomnia, you know, all of these like third eye mental center type of things. So um, that, that's what happened in, uh, to me recently, which is why I'm explaining it to you.